Hello everyone, this is Bryant with Pneumatic Dyno. Um, making a quick video on some throttle bore reducers that I tested over the weekend. About eight months ago, a customer I remote tuned, Jared Moyer, um, he and I have been in contact ever since. Well, we were trying to figure out a way to make the throttle response better and we came to the conclusion that it's just too much throttle body for a 302 type situation and we need to restrict the airflow so he 3d printed me some after we came up with it um, mailed them to me and it took this long just to get to test them and I ended up making my own as well so here goes the testing all the tests were done in open loop with an HEI on a 1970 Ford Maverick the 351 it's got uh, some eBay GT40P heads probably something similar to like a B303 cam in it. No idea, truly. Um, C4 Auto did three runs, or uh, three pulls of each test, back to back. Uh, made sure the coolant temperature was the same in all of them. It was really cold in the shop for all these tests, like 20 degrees. It was real fun. Um, and these tests were done at about 3,300 feet altitude. So you will see KPA numbers that are lower than some of you may be used to. Here is what the reducers look like. Uh, this one's about 23 millimeters, 26 millimeters, and 29 millimeters. And the outside for reference, so the throttle bore diameter is 42 millimeters and some change. And here's a pretty rendering of my 3D files that I made. It has a hole down for it as well. For So if you have something like this that has, you know, bad valves in it that occasionally kicks out of the carburetor regardless, this keeps them in place so they don't pop out and just rattle around in your air cleaner. This is going to be our baseline for restriction. This is open throttle body. It dropped about 1 kPa over the entire pole, roughly, maybe 2. Um, ignore the average numbers on this screen. I do not have my dyno programmed to calculate engine power correctly because it's just a guess anyways. Um, so here's all the open throttle data. Here is the largest reducers. So we dropped 1.3 kPa over the pole. Um, power was negligible difference. 2 horsepower, 4 foot-pounds, that's the difference in pulls, nothing to be concerned about. Um, to be clear, the bottom one on this graph is the reducers. Here we have the medium reducers. We dropped 3.9 kPa over the entire pull. Here's the power differences. It made pretty much the same. That's not even, that's a pull-to-pull -pull difference. Here is the smallest, so we dropped 8.4 kPa from start to finish, and it did drop some power, so we lost 19 horsepower and 7 foot-pounds of peak torque. Um, this one on the dyno graphs will have a different open throttle body test, um, because I had to do it on a different day for time constraints and I was freezing my ass off. Just for reference, this is the ACES 12 inch filter. It had a 5.5 kPa drop and the biggest power drop of any of them. Um, and this is brand new, right out of the box, just got the thing like a week ago. So, drop in kPa does not necessarily correlate directly with drop in horsepower, it can vary. I should also note this one was done on the same day as the smallest um, reducers because I was just curious how much the filter was different from the smallest ones. All right, here's the party graph. So this is all the runs that I'm just going to show you today. I did like 35 or something dyno pulls on this poor engine. So here is the results. So like I told you, there was two different open throttle body tests that I did from day to day. Here's the difference in those. So it just one day it made a little more power than the other down low and up high actually. Not a big deal, it happens. So this one goes with the smallest reducers. 
So as you can see, they're pretty close up to about here. Then it starts to trail off, you know, difference of 10-ish horsepower. Yeah, it's 301 to 281. So 20 horsepower loss at the top. If you're driving around wide open throttle all day, sure, I guess that might affect your life. Here is, we're going to switch to the other one. So there's day two where I did these ones. So here's the largest. They lay right on top of each other for the most part, kind of trade back and forth. It's kind of even hard to see because I picked the same colors for some stupid reason. Um, AFR has changed a little bit between them, but I don't know. Just kind of interesting to see. There's the medium, same thing. It's it's the same. Maybe a little snorty at the bottom. That's actually like a notable gain. Um, yeah, that's like 15 foot pounds. So we'll call that a gain, and that is with the reducer in. So now we'll switch back to this. That is the air cleaner. The air cleaner lost power kind of everywhere. So, and it did not, we'll just compare the air cleaner to the smallest. It didn't even come close to the smallest um, throttle body reducers. So that's interesting. Again, this is on a just under 300 wheel horsepower. 351 winds are pretty average build. And with 38% of the total throttle body, uh, surface area it made the same power so yeah I'll put a I'll put a screenshot of what the calculations are for just the area I'm no engineer I'm no mathematician I just make things and test them and see what happens so here are the results to that I got another video um, this is like my fourth time recording this I have a video of the throttle response differences between the spacers I'm gonna upload that separately so that I don't have to do this again so if you stuck through this long thank you for watching